We have some other civil rights museums in the country, uh, and they're very effective, they're really powerful. Um, but what this museum does is it contextualizes uh, the story of civil rights struggle. It's really important that we understand slavery and the legacy of slavery, uh, because without understanding the degradation and the brutality of that era, you can't appreciate this growing burden that people of color are trying to manage. And it's important that we understand the terror that followed emancipation, because it is that terrorism uh, that shaped the demographic geography of this nation. And those people of color who remained in the region were determined uh, to claim their rightful place. And it's in that context that the civil rights story becomes alive. And I think the museum provides that context in a way that's quite unique. I think we're constantly um, achieving things that need to be achieved, but we still have this underlying problem you know, that we haven't really addressed. And so a lot of things are better, and a lot of things uh, haven't improved, and some things are worse. You know, I'm very concerned about the comfort level we have with hate and bigotry and discrimination in this country. Uh, I'm worried about this continued over-incarceration and what it's doing to our communities. Um, so we have a lot of challenges. I'm excited because I think a generation of, of people are stepping up to meet some of these challenges. That's the most hopeful thing that I see. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Stevenson. At times, I feel just like a cut, bruised, scarred old lawyer trying to help people on death row, trying to help people living in the margins of our society. But tonight, uh, you've made me feel like the cuts and bruises and scars of the communities that I stand for, the communities that I represent, are being honored. And for that, I'm extremely grateful.